So now that you've seen some of the basics of what a trigger can do, I'm going to show you why we have triggers. Um, generally use them to make sure that people aren't doing things with your data that you didn't intend. Um, it's another form of doing a constraint. So let's say here I have select splat from employee territories. This table is a many-to-many -many mapping table, meaning it maps many employees to many territories. So I suppose in the north wind world they have employees that are responsible for certain territories for selling and that kind of thing or managing customers whatever okay so if I want to know what who employee ID number one here is I can say select splat from employees where employee ID is one it looks like we have Nancy Devolio she is in charge of two territories and if I want to know what these territories were um, well there's a few ways I could do it I could write a subquery and stuff let's just select splat from territories, uh, where territory ID, territory ID in. Let's just hard code this for now. And unfortunately, the territory ID is a character string, even though it looks like a number. It's very poor choice of data type there, but it is what it is. So let's just roll with it. Uh, so zero nine eight seven and uh, one nine seven one three. And again, ideally, this would be a subquery, not just hard coded in here. So it looks like Nancy has. Um, the Wilton Territory and the Newer Territory. All right, but if you look at this, this Employee Territories table, I have Nancy has two territories. Number two here has a bunch more. Number three has a bunch more, so on and so forth. Seven. It makes you curious. Uh, who's doing the most work here? So let's uh, group by Employee ID, and let's select Count Splat. So I want to see the Employee ID. Employee. ID, whatever, and then the count of the number of territories they have. So let's do that. And it looks like employee ID, well, that's Nancy again. She has two, two has seven, three has four. In fact, let's do um, uh, the count, or as the count, if you like using the as, is not required. And then I'm going to order by the count, run that, let's just run it by itself. Looks like employee number seven here has ten territories. Two's working hard as well. So you can see kind of who's just taking on the most territories here. Well, say we want to say 10 is the limit. I mean, 7 is our rock star employee, but 7 is really overloading themselves, so we don't want the boss man to give 7 more work, so we want to want to limit 7 to only having uh, 10, tori 10 territories. In fact, any employee. We don't want any employee having more than 10 territories. Well, let's look again at the employee territories table. I'm going to, let's just get rid of all this now, and say select splat from employee territories. I'd like to add a constraint, another constraint, uh, to constrain this, these values uh, to be 10 or less. So if I run this, well, I can't add a unique constraint because if I added a unique constraint to just this column, then every employee could only have one territory. And that's useless. I don't, I don't want to do that. And so if we add a unique constraint here, well, then that would say that a territory can only have one employee. And maybe maybe that is something we want in our schema, but but that doesn't limit the value to 10. I'm not trying to do 1. I'm trying to do 10 or 12 or 13 or whatever arbitrary number I want to do. Okay, well, we could put a unique constraint against both of these, but then that's just the same as the primary key. If we look here at this table, uh, i got to refresh. If I look at the table here, employees, territories, notice the column, the... The primary key is made up of these two columns combined, so they're unique together. Meaning, I have employee ID 1 here is mapped to 06897, but I can't record that again. One can be associated with another territory, that's fine, but not the same territory. That would be duplicate information, we don't want to do that. Okay, so adding a new constraint across here doesn't help either. A check constraint, okay, well we saw check constraints in a previous video. But check constraints can only look at the values in one row. I can't look against multiple rows with a check constraint. I'm limited to just one row. So my last resort is a trigger where I have to write some code to uh, ensure that the number of territories assigned to each employee is 10 or less. And I'll do that for you in the next video.